The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host as I try to get my levels right. That sounds a little bit better. Ah, it's bad when you can't even hear yourself. Uh, what we have is a uh, S&P that's down 25, although it was down about 40, 45 earlier. I think 50 or 55 overnight in the uh, futures. I don't spend a lot of time on the futures because, of course, it's too easy to push those around and... Uh, not get a good reading. We're still off uh, 200 points on the Dow. NASDAQ uh, is off 81. Uh, Russell's down about 6. Uh, we look at crude oil. It's up about 63, which is not much. Again, even though Iran, Iran rattles sabers, they've put pipelines around the Isthmus of uh, Hormuz about 2012. There isn't much that they can't get around. It adds about a dollar a barrel uh, at that level to the crude, and they're making it 12, so it becomes 13 bucks. It's not going to change uh, a lot for the Saudis and the rest of the world if they do tend to ship it. So uh, not much going on there. Um, you know, gold and silver, trying to figure out what it should do. And, uh, of course, the VIX, the big mover up today, about 25%. Uh, other things going on, well, we had a very tough overnight session uh, in Asia, and uh, I think that continues on with uh, trade tensions uh, as we continue on. Anyway, uh, we're going to look at a lot of charts today. Um, it made a lot of sense uh, for uh, President Trump to go ahead and push all he could for a trade deal now while the markets were at uh, – recent highs, especially with the light volume, if you let it uh, go high and prove the fact that uh, it's a weak market, uh, probably problematic. Um, again, uh, people probably going to want to be buying every dip until it's proven a variety of times, maybe four or five times they'll buy the dip uh, and give back a great deal of what they had if the market is pulling back. Um, I'm looking at probably about 200 points, so you could get back to 2750. Uh, that may be the level where this market can consolidate, go forward, and actually blow out those highs on the S&P cash with volume. We certainly did not have it. Uh, I'm going to say pathetic, uh, tepid at best on Friday for the huge moves what we had. Uh, going into the end of the weekend. Uh, certainly, this is a lighter time of year for the stock market. Start getting into summer trading. I don't see any reason why the market should break out from here. Not a lot of earnings that could actually drive the market higher, at least not in the next week. Uh, we have a huge sucking sound. Oh, I should have had Mr. Ross Perot set up. Uh, a huge sucking sound from all these IPOs. Uh, where you may have to uh, take all the cash that would normally go into a market uh, in one month and put it up against uh, three or four uh, IPOs uh, to raise the amount of cash that these guys want to raise in the next uh, seven to, man, let's call it two weeks. Uh, and again, then that takes us into a three-day weekend at the end of the month. That's 27th, uh, starting officially uh, the summer. Um, I'm thinking that there's two scenarios. One, I was looking for a fairly decent pullback on Friday, as I told everybody. Uh, I was buying the nuclear weapon and options uh, if we pulled back. So they're up fairly decently today, about 230% so far on the first day. Uh, but we'll continue to keep an eye on that. We could continue to see people trying to buy the dip no matter what. Uh, there isn't a lot of selling pressure uh, now because, frankly, 
unless you're in a dog stock, you're probably in a winning position. Take probably take a bit to get people to sell. Uh, but uh, the question is, can you buy or get somebody to buy higher? And that is the uh, the old thing of uh, who's the fool, the fool that follows the fool or the fool to begin with. But um, trying to find a bigger fool to buy a stock at an even higher price eventually leads to a collapse. So I think I think President probably did the right thing, which is pushes the advantage, keep the market from going up there and blowing up uh, like a giant balloon, which we'll talk about today, uh, and uh, let the market pull back enough to get the kind of uh, juice it needs to go out and break out to all uh, highs. In fact, I think we get a deal maybe this summer or next fall or this fall. Uh, with China uh, that actually sticks, uh, it could be exciting. Now, to this point, um, they were probably smart to stay back and see what happened uh, with the uh, bogus, uh, bogus Russian issue with the president, because maybe he was out. Maybe he could find a weaker president that would take over. If they, he was reading the headlines, if he knew what was going on, eh, it wasn't ever going to happen. Uh, but uh, you know what we can see now? We can see him trying to push the advantage, and the market will probably, at least for a short amount of time, start to pull back. Now, if we thought the end of the world was coming, would the IYT be up 1.6%? Uh, kind of very interesting. We're going to pick through all of this today, but I think we're starting to get some signals that the market could pull back. A lot of cash has to come out to buy these new IPOs. Those new IPOs will not be in the indexes for a while. But uh, we shall see. And, of course, uh, as always, we like to start the show off with a little bit of history. And, of course, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Um, okay. Oh, we always like to come to you at this time, by the way. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And what else? Oh, we got some history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. What do we have? We've got on this day in 1937, the German airship Hindenburg, the largest dirigible ever built, explodes as it arrives in Lakehurst, New Jersey. 36 people died in a fiery accident that has since become iconic, in part because of the live radio broadcast of this disaster. Uh, it was filled with flammable. Uh, 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 hydrogen. Um, they had a coating on it that burned like wildfire. Um, it's not too far for what they make solid rocket boosters out of uh, and why it looks silver. Uh, but recreations have finally gotten to the point where there was strong wind and uh, they were trying to get this thing to come in and land in a certain area. Uh, and the way that they did it probably put too much stress on the rudder in the back, creating a tear that uh, then let uh, all the gas escape, breaking some uh, ribs, and then it finally exploding in a ball of fire. Oh, the humanity. We'll be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we are back. Uh, we'll start looking at some stuff uh, today. I should have brought that up during the break. Was distracted. And I'm easily distracted. Uh, was spending most of the morning uh, watching uh, Microsoft's dog and pony show for developers to see what's coming out. Um, spent a lot of time, or they did, spent a lot of time on showing the new HoloLens augmented reality. And uh, if you remember the first Terminator, um, the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger would look at something and he'd have all kinds of overlays um, showing what was going on and, uh, you know, with arrows pointing which direction to go to and stuff like that. I would just assume that was all built into the same CPU. But, uh, of course, I know it's there for artistic reasons to tell the audience what the Android, was it Android? It was a cyber something because it had human skin over a metal exoskeleton. Um, anyway, that's kind of what it looks like. It just puts, superimposes all kinds of things over a clear screen. Um, interesting pieces on it, 3,500 bucks, plus whatever the software costs. Um, doesn't seem like that's gonna be a consumer product for a while, but it does look like Microsoft, at least the first company, figure out a way to make money on it. They've sold uh, about 100,000 of them to the government for uh, a variety of training missions and uh, also to car companies. So, you know, where they've had problems trying to push these into Best Buy, uh, either fully uh, virtual reality or these augmented reality devices. Um, interesting demos, a little bit too... Uh, much money for what you get, I think. Uh, more of the targeted applications for uh, military and um, assembly line work uh, where they think it will really help. Uh, but uh, they had one thing that I think actually makes Microsoft show how well they are adapting to the world and setting, uh, making the world adapt to them, and that is their new uh, uh, Windows Explorer browser. Windows Explorer, the Windows or their Internet Explorer, 
uh, is coming out, and it's got a lot of functionality uh, to grab tables off of web pages, uh, pictures, and format all the text and everything else. Um, it's going to be great for me in my newsletters because there's a lot of times I want to refer to stuff, uh, and it uh, takes care of that, making it look very good through uh, both artificial intelligence and some fairly decent smart programming. So I, I think that's one good part of it for me. They're finally going to unify all the .NET te technologies under one roof. Uh, there's been a lot of them over the last few years. I'd been waiting to release a new version of uh, the Art of Timing the Trade charts. Uh, I did send the links uh, to Tommy uh, this morning, so we're going to be rolling that out. Um, should be a lot quicker, and I've added some new functionality to it. Uh, one of the problems, especially with working with data vendors, has been to get somebody that will actually understand price and volume trading. It's wrong on a lot of uh, systems, and one of the reasons why I think a lot of people uh, are confused about price and volume trading. Uh, what we did do with this one and the data, uh, data, the data, the data uh, folks, is put this together. So now. Uh, the CBOE consolidated volume tape is the volume that you will see under the S&P uh, and others. Um, from uh, turning volume off altogether to not giving a rat's patootie about the volume and making it correct on indexes and other things, uh, it's been problematic. Um, again, these guys are selling data. None of them are stock traders, so you kind of have to lead them by the nose. Uh, and uh, But uh, we do have a new version. It is much faster. It is much quicker. Same thing, I guess. Uh, but uh, now, whether you go to the S&P 500 or you go to the uh, uh, NYSE, you're going to have some consistent volumes that are not uh, party to the whims of uh, uh, data. Uh, folk, uh, we've been able to pair up the CBOE, uh, which uh, does the correct volumes, and uh, the data uh, companies that are actually giving you the high, low, open, close on those indexes and put them together. Uh, and uh, I think that's about it. Uh, we're probably going to do some promotions on it. So if you haven't uh, tried it yet, or maybe if you wanted to try it again, uh, depending on what we do, that will be it. But uh, I've uh, been working on that actually since Christmas and trying to update it to everything. So, again, you know, it can, uh, with only minor updates, it can last for a while. I, I basically, the only thing I ever use, I don't spend a lot of time looking at minute charts. Um, as a, kind of a wise man said, Jesse Livermore, uh, a lot of people that are looking at uh, infinitesimal time frames, kind of like asking, uh, what day it is, and the guy looks at the second hand of his watch, uh, doesn't give you the big trends, but we will get into those today, too. And uh, that's about it. Now, uh, let's go up and above and higher uh, and look at some. Uh, Adobe has been one of the ones that has been interesting to me, if I can actually spell it right. Uh, to A-D-B-E. Uh, not a bad looking chart out here. We've been talking about these double repo patterns. Uh, this thing was and started above uh, the last time, really, back on the 21st of March, above the nine day, continued to go high. It spiked higher, it gapped higher, uh, and it's gone back and filled that gap. Uh, we're now pushing, or we're pushing back up uh, to these highs. But this is one that never had a sign of strength on the breakout, it had a little bit of volume on one day, gave most of it back, tried to push back, did the reversal. Now we're back at support. Uh, but now you should be able to either use a nine day moving average or because it has it, the art of timing the trade, you can go up here and use displaced moving averages. And you can see what this thing needs to close under to continue uh, being uh, bearish in the uh, foreseeable future, but uh, there's the next three days extended out at the end of the chart, 
Uh, when a lot of people ask me why I like the three uh, by three displaced moving average or any of the other displaced moving averages, that's because it gives me a little bit of a product, uh, prediction and price uh, trade of where I want to know uh, that this thing continues either under or if I'm bullish, if it pops back above. Uh, but it certainly gives me that trend line. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. About ready to go to break. Um, and we're still off 23, 24 points on the S&P cash. We want to check in with volumes. We're doing about 4 billion shares as we started. So the volume, not again, all that exciting. But again, you almost have to give these markets about three days for either the volume to come in, either on the upside or the downside. Uh, it, it's kind of sneaky. It's not being real plain about what it wants to do, other than that giant gap down. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we were talking last week, we had a lot of stocks, and I'll guarantee that we're going to have a million of them tonight. Uh, and that is a little hyperbolic, isn't it? Not a million stocks. Um, we're going to have a bunch of them that close below either nine-day moving average or three by three. And I suspect they're going to actually confirm uh, a double repo pattern that's uh, generally, or it used to be when it first designed, 10 to 15 days above uh, a moving average, a couple of days below that, 
couple of days above it. And then the next turn below that, if it doesn't do much and the volume kind of drops out, that's where the big destruction comes. Um, I've got a couple of new ones, uh, I think. And then it, well, maybe they're there. Yeah, I got a couple, of, well, maybe a new one here today is Bud. I wanted to see this one. This is a kind of exactly what you're looking for. And and that means that you know pretty much where to get out, which is a close above uh, the uh, three by three or just nine day moving average. But uh, Anheuser-Busch is a good example here. This is how a lot of highs are actually made. And it takes a little while for them to develop. But this is a very good signal, uh, a medium term signal that a high is in. This would take you back down to probably uh, the 76 range. Uh, and that's 10 to 15 days. It's kind of the broad interpretation above a handful of days below, a handful of days above. And then the next close below is the signal to pretty much pull the trigger uh, as long as it stays below there. And you can have a very nice uh, risk reward being short this way. Again, we've got a, a handful of things going on in cross currents. Um, we start options expiration on Wednesday. Uh, that takes us to options expiration on the 17th. And then we have kind of a very long time frame without a lot of earnings, a lot of numbers that take us into uh, the Memorial Day weekend, which is, uh, uh, well, the, the 27th. I'll be leaving the 24th, coming back about the 3rd. Uh, so I'll be out, but newsletters and all that stuff continue on. The market does not stop when I decide to leave. Although I've been I've been thinking about calling them up and asking them to do that. Uh, but I suspect most of the shooting's going to be over. Uh, if we pull back, which I think we certainly could, we could see some fairly decent lows by June, early part of June, and maybe setting up a summer rally. Uh, and of course, if we continue to kind of try to push this market higher, uh, it's kind of like pushing on a string, but maybe they just hold it up, uh, then more than likely it'll hold up through the 27th. And then we have a horrible summer. Um, ideally, if you're bullish, you would like the market to pull back here on lighter volume now, rather than go up on lighter volume and make in a definitive high uh, that gets cremated across the summer. Okay, so what else do we have? I wanted to look at some other stuff. Let's uh, just go ahead and get into that. I want to see a few of these on my list. Do, 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 do. Netflix, certainly on this one. Um, I have a lot of people keep asking about shorting Netflix. It's kind of a very tough stock to short. Uh, do I have the short volumes up? No, I do not. Let me go ahead and get them up. And that is uh, in FLX. Okay, you had uh, on Thursday about 29% of uh, the shares uh, were initiated with a short position. Doesn't mean they went home with them, but pretty significant shorting. Uh, Friday, not much at all, about 20% in comparison anyway. And when you get to the monthly time frames, um, you've got about uh, three days to cover, which is, for a stock like this, probably not that big. Uh, you do have about 15, 15 million, yeah, 15 million shares. So that continues on to be uh, kind of eh, decent, but not overwhelming in that um a break if i was looking at it here hard resistance at 400 a break would take you right back down to 350. so you got to say on the risk reward st uh, storm front you've got to be looking at the downside uh as being uh kind of the wide side of that trading now we're uh, down about 18 points on the s p cash so they are trying to push 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 but again kind of lighter volume uh, let's make sure we got everything here. I got a bunch of positions on, so uh, the only thing I hate is I didn't short more on Friday, but uh, eh, you live and you learn.
Um, again, oh, we were talking about IYT. We want to take a look at that. That one's been fairly volatile. Um, and again, you want to see how these things work out. Um, trading at about 197 uh, at the moment. Uh, no volume at all on this one. I did try to go below uh, the uh, 3 by 3 displaced this morning, bounced off of it. Uh, and the question is, um, if the economy picks up in the United States because we don't have as much imports from China and manufacturing starts to pick up here a bit too, um, could we see kind of a really rich man, poor man situation going on? Again, a lot of people have been trying to get into uh, the IWM thinking it would be uh, the big winner on China going down because those companies can react faster to displacements in the market. Uh, but that's trade probably getting a little long in the tooth. Um, but a fairly nice bounce in the IYT. And I don't have a great explanation on it just yet, but uh, interesting nonetheless. Other stocks that are on my list of naughty and nice um, are Yelp. Um, again, this one, uh, got cremated, uh, crucified, bludgeoned, shot, stabbed, and hung on November 9th of last year. Tw got down to 29.33 uh, when it blew apart. It's been working its way all the way back up here. Last major high was February 15th at $40.78. That had uh, 4.7 million shares. You got into it on Friday with 1 million shares. Today, you don't have a lot of volume with about 5 150,000 shares, no close underneath the uh, moving averages yet. But I think we could see these things set up again. And generally you have about a, uh, when the markets go up through options expiration, uh, you have about a 1% uh, bias over time uh, during that period. So it's generally a little bullish. Uh, but when they're bearish, which is only about 15 maybe 20% of the time historically uh, for options expiration, uh, it's down 3% on average. So again, you have a lot of asymmetry uh, going in to the end or the beginning of the summer, actually. We'll be back in a minute. Looking forward to your phone calls at 877-927-6648. We'll look at Microsoft when we come back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And uh, did we say, oh, I th said I was going to look at Microsoft and wandered off the reservation. Uh, so uh, we'll get through. A um, couple of stocks looking kind of interesting out here. Paz finally looks like it might have made some kind of bottom. You really need a close back over 1209 to get into it. Uh, but certainly kind of hammered down on 3 million shares uh, on the second. Uh, the last couple of days have been lighter volume. Just a little sideways action out here today. Uh, but uh, you only need about 20 cent push to get uh, some of these uh, miners back in uh, to the fold. Uh, MSFT. Again, um, I spent a lot of my time uh, taking a look at Microsoft uh, during these uh, and the other ones, uh, Facebook and uh, Google, during their developer conferences. And of course, uh, Salesforce has theirs too, but kind of closed. You don't hear a lot about it. Uh, the ones for the big guys tend to be live stream. So I was able to watch it from about 1130 on to about 1230. Um, and you get a little sense of it. Now, I'm not surprised that it's on a little bounce up here. Of course, it's the leader of the market these days. But the bounce, pretty light volume. Um, again, what you're looking for uh, on these, and I think we kind of see it here fairly quickly. Uh, is that you've had uh, eh, really back to uh, about the end of March, this thing above uh, the three by three. You now have a couple closes below it. You get one more close above it, maybe a couple of days, and then it closes back, back below it. Um, this one actually could have some fairly decent pullback, but uh, first support area comes in about 121. But uh, things get ugly out there. Um, could move fairly quickly. Uh, now we're down to 16 points on the S&P cash. You gotta buy that dip. Remember, doesn't matter what you do in the stock market as long as you buy the dip. Um, but we'll keep an eye on this. Uh, other things going on for today, keeping a close eye on the dollar. That certainly rocketed down on the trade issues yesterday where this was trading at about um, what about, um, I'm going to call it, uh, 90, 97.80, uh, trading out at around what right now, uh, 97.26. Um, again, a lot of uh, volatility quick off the headlines. Uh, and uh, of course, then when we came back uh, to actually looking at the markets today, uh, the ones that actually got slammed were the Chinese markets. Uh, and again, Maybe a little self-inflicted wound by Mr. Z over there. Zai? Zai? I think it's Zai. Don't want to confuse him with our Mr. Z in the stock in the uh, Tiger's Den. Uh, but again, not a lot of movement to make you think a lot's going on. Uh, copper, $2.84. Again, we're looking for copper over 3 bucks to say that the uh, world economy is really starting to take back off again. We've never seen, we never really got up there with any kind of gusto. Uh, and it continues to be an issue. 
Uh, Apple, take a quick look and see how it reacted to the news. Uh, this got right up to resistance, uh, popped down today, still holding above it. And again, it may take another week or so for this stuff to develop, but it is starting to develop. And that is uh, the next close uh, below a nine day or a three by three displaced moving average pretty much puts a top into this. Uh, you could easily see a pullback to 190, uh, which is this ledge from about the 21st of March uh, back into the 28th of March. That kind of looks uh, like where you have a lot of support uh, in those three down days, or at least uh, red candles and a lot of shorting. Um, you had some people short on on uh, Wednesday last week, uh, but that was about it in Apple. Again, um, I think there are much better stocks out here to short, stocks with that cash, uh, companies that are uh, issuing more stock and diluting the shares. Um, a lot of reasons to do it. Apple doesn't have any of those reasons. Uh, again, I don't know why it's up here, but at the same time, I don't see a lot of cause uh, there are a lot of other stocks that uh, have a lot bigger um, things to hit. A uh, little bit of weakness, but light volume in the Boeing company today. It did gap down with the rest of them. Um, you know, as long as it kind of continues to hold this 370 level, uh, it's one of two things, either accumulation or distribution. Uh, people that are bears would say distribution and people... Uh, actually, that are bullish would say accumulation uh, on this downside. Um, I don't think in a year anybody's going to talk about it. I remember when everybody was yelling and screaming about Intel uh, and uh, all the horrible things uh, that was going on uh, with uh, uh, people being able to hack it at will because of some um, issue with the processor. Uh, and here it is, what, a year and... I'm going to say a year and three months, maybe a year and four months later, still nothing. Still nobody that was hacked by that su supposedly specter meltdown fraud that went on. Um, you know what? If you can go out and rob a house that's not locked up, why do you need to go in a house that is locked up that takes a lot more time and uh, you're making a lot of money or making a lot of noise breaking the windows to do so? There are a lot of uh, security uh, issues with anything, but for the most part, they aren't in hardware because to exploit them, you almost always have to have the hardware. And if you've got the machine in your own uh, care, just very tough. If you've got somebody that can go plug something in to a machine at an office, I mean, you're already inside, and that is not what... Uh, anybody thinks that you ever should be able to protect against. I mean, you should have good security. Uh, but uh, kind of interestingly, Tesla sent out a really nasty letter saying that if you leak any information on Tesla, we're going to find you and we're going to ruin your life um, over the weekend. But, you know, in, in security, it's never about one thing. It's not about the, the, uh, it's not about the uh, barbed wire. It's the fence and the barbed wire and the moat and the uh, and the uh, gullies and rocks and all the other stuff you have to come over. It's security's never one thing, but I always thought it was uh, a narrative. Uh, that's a story put above logic, um, truth, and uh, uh, your own uh, good sense. Uh, that's pushed by the media. And I'm not exactly sure why Intel actually got pushed that hard back then. Maybe somebody wanted the shares. Maybe someone didn't want the shares. A lot of palace intrigue that I would rather just stay away from in, in Intel these days. And most people know that uh, I dislike immensely uh, a CFO becoming a CEO of a big company like this. Um, so I'm going to be passing on Intel until they pass on the current CFO or he or CEO excuse me or he proves that he is capable of it and you kind of have that Star Trek thing you got to have Kurt who takes all the risk you got to have a logical guy like Spock Spock, well, Spock couldn't run the ship by himself he needs Captain Kurt so we don't want Spock to run it forever 
just my two cents. We'll be back to wrap up the show. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we get to uh, end up the day, uh... Uh, that's it. Um, okay. Just looking at a handful of things here. I want to see how this is winding down. Uh, we're off 13 points in the S&P cash. Dow's down 85. NASDAQ's down 40. Uh, Russell's down 3. And again, everybody's going to buy these dips. What we can say is the volume off the lows this morning is pretty light. Um, also using up a lot of energy. We haven't had volume at the highs before. Nothing's really changed since last week. No real uh, new catalyst to drive this market higher. Earnings are going to be from much smaller companies that can't really move the indexes around uh, for the rest of the week. I didn't see anything in there that was that exciting. Uh, again, not uncommon to see uh, going into the 27th, uh, see a market just kind of drift higher. Uh, and squeeze the last of the shorts out. But you know what? If we do that, then there's some real destruction that's going to happen this summer. Um, again, if you're bullish, what you want to see is this market pull back into the end of the month on lighter volume. You don't want to see it drive up to some highs that are truly unsustainable and let everybody know that there's no way and a major high is in. 
But uh, you just can't tell right now. Um, non-committal to the upside, non-committal to the downside in these markets. And again, we're going to need a couple more days. Uh, I'll be looking at options tonight to see whether or not a lot of people blinked and started buying downside protection, which would be a good sign that we were. Uh, this is a kind of a one-day thing. Uh, but uh, if they didn't buy options, kind of a good sign, or at least protection for lower, probably a pretty good sign uh, that there is mass complacency. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We will see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. <laughs>